Hello everybody, um, it's Bailey, and today I'm not going to pretend to really be happy, I'm having a weird day. Uh, it started last night, well yesterday. Uh, so as you know me, as my name is MCRX ICP, I, I know you understand I like My Chemical Romance. Uh, and last night My Chemical Romance announced that they will no longer be together. Um, I don't know. I never thought I'd have to say these things. I don't really know. Um, I just feel like they've done so much for me, and regardless of anything that happens and how anything went out and whatever happens now, I, I need to put out there how I felt, and I, I quite honestly don't care if anyone's going to, you know, be like, fuck you about this, or call me emo, do, do what you will. I don't, I don't give a fuck. This has to be out there because... They've done so much for me. I'm not going to stand there and be silent. I, I'm going to start with the whole story. So, I mean, if you're not into listening to it, that's that's fine. But I ha I have to tell I have to tell the world because because this is what it means to me, and this is this is what I have to do. And um, kind of like the last coping mechanism of my chemical romance that I have. Uh, <laughs> gotta gotta thank them here. For what they've done. I'm gonna start here, okay. Well, I remember when I was, I started listening to My Chemical Romance at a very young age. I was about nine. I've listened to them for 10 years. I'm 19 now. Um, I really, I, I was in a place where my, my, my grandmother had just died, and I freaking, I, I had never experienced death because I was such a young child, and like, my grandpa was sick, and, and you know, and I, I didn't know a lot about death. It had always interested me, you know, um, and, and when I faced it, and then I started, you know, that was just part of it. I was already a kid that no one, I got made fun of. No no one really liked me at all. <laughs> like, I had some some friends, but, yeah, you know, when you're growing up, you, you always feel pretty much alone, and, um, even at the age of, you know, being that young, I started realizing I was different, and I already was into, like, dressing in darker clothing, and people were making fun of me, and they would, like, uh, call me gothic, and, uh, people would make fun of me, and people still make fun of me to this day for being the chick that was gothic, but, um, it really wasn't hardcore gothic, I was just, you know, I was, I, that's what I thought was looked cool, so I was into that kind of fashion and stuff, and people always really made fun of me for it, and, and I, when, when, it, when I, okay, the first thing I ever saw, I, I'm sorry, this is rambling, but it's coming from my heart, so I, I'm not gonna just put on all happiness here. Uh, so I, when I saw the video, I'm not okay, I, I'd always felt like an outcast, and that video spoke to me so very much, because you see, first of all, you see the video came on, and I remember being like, what the fuck? Oops, sorry. But I'm like, why is there a movie on my on the music video channel? And then you know it comes up with uh, Ray Toro and Gerard, which you know at this point I had no idea who these people were, and I had no idea wh what was gonna happen in my life. And um, they're talking about you know like D and D, Audrey Hepburn, Fangoria, Harry Houdini, and Croquet. You can't swim, you can't dance, and you don't know karate. Face it, you're never gonna make it. And I I just I was drawn in immediately, and I was like. Okay, so I'm into this, and it's like, if you've ever felt alone, and I was like, uh, alright, I kind of understand, and I understood the whole symbolism of the video, you know, they're all fucking shit up, but they're in this world where, like, everything's trying to be perfect, but then they're like, you know, everything's looks okay, it's not okay, but, you know, so, so for me, that was such a big deal, because it reflected how I felt even at such a young age, and um, I, I'd always felt like, you know, no one understood that. And, I mean, even though I, I guess people did, it, you, when you're that age, you don't know. And, I mean, I was just beginning to be, like, you know, going to be a teenager soon. Like, it was it was, it was, was early in my life. And, um, anyways, though, uh, but anyways, when, when my grandma died, I, I soon later saw the music video Helena, which, you know, it was my first funeral, and that music video really struck me, you know, I really felt for it and finally I was like you know what I've only heard two songs by this band I never really used the internet 
yeah, yeah, I really had never used the internet at the time. And, um, I was like, I'm gonna go to the library and Google them, because, you know, internet dial-up sucked, and we, I, we were at the point where we didn't have freaking internet that was workable, and la la la. And I went to their website, and it was back in the revenge days, when, you know, everything was all crazy, Gerard drawings and whatnot. And after reading up, and I found out that it was Gerard and Mikey's grandmother that inspired Gerard to write Helena, I... I felt like it was some kind of sign, something that, you know, this is exactly how I feel right now. I don't fit in anywhere. I just learned what death was like and, you know, lost someone that was close to me. And this was exactly what they were talking about. And I felt like, all right, well, they obviously must... They, they had. I, I looked into it and found out, you know, how their music just spoke to me in so many different ways. And I understood, like the dark feelings and stuff, and, uh, I wanted revenge for Christmas, and my aunt got me bullets on accident. Be well, she got me bullets because Three Cheers for State Revenge had a label on it, you know, that says, parental advisory. Well, if you look on the album that for, um, bullets, it does not have the label, and I think it's because it's from Eyeball Records and it's an indie label, so, um, I think that's why it is like that. Um, so, you know, she thinks it's the better one. Oh, yeah, that, that was, that was a great album, and it, and, um, it really, it, it was real, it was so real, it was so raw, and it was so much feeling into it, and I had no idea even that that album had existed, because I, I, you know, like I said, didn't really use the internet, I didn't know much about them other than what I had Googled, and as, you know, internet comes, became more prevalent with, like, me and whatnot, um, I, I, I've learned everything about them to the point that it's like, it's like I know them. And every single song has always spoken to me. Um, I used to be in choir, I loved to sing, so like, you know, it, he was such an inspiration, Gerard. He was so, he's so three, he's, hey, saying was, he is, he's so theatrical. And every member in that band, like, freaking had, has, they have so much talent, they just, I hate to see anything go. But I also know that I don't feel like it's, I feel like it's never really over with them because all the fans who were saved by them when they felt alone, you know, like I felt alone so many times. I felt like there's no reason. And, you know, everyone in that band will, you know, no, we want to save your life. No, that no. And, and it was beyond the music at that point. I love the music, but the people the band, all of them, every single one of them, they they care, and they, they really wanted to help people, and they love doing what they do, and uh, I, I, I don't know what caused them to have to leave, but that is out of my control, and more than anything, I'd like to thank them for what they've done, um, because when I was growing up, you know, I went through times where I felt suicidal, but they, they made you hang in there, they made you want to fight, keep fighting, keep fighting the good fight, you know. Do it for what you believe in, screw what other people think, keep going, just keep going. And I think that's part of the reason that to this day I still keep going. Um, when I was 16 and I got alopecia, which is why I'm bald, there's a video on the channel if you're seeing this from another thing. Uh, I'm not going to go into that, the video is not about that. But, like, even then, they were there when I was, like, suicidal growing up as a teenager, you know, from, like, freaking nine and up, and, and then, you know, 16, and they were still helping me, and they still gave me the power, and, like, there's so many songs that I feel like if I had just named a few, it wouldn't be enough. Sing, it keeps me singing, it keeps me believing that, you know, my voice is what I have, and I need to use it so people can hear what's going on in the world, so I can make a difference, so people will listen. Um, cancer simply hit me, because even though I don't have cancer, and it's not like that, the whole, my hair is abandoned on my body, all my agony. They want to say that my alopecia was caused by stress, and well, that my hair abandoned all the stress, and I feel like... I understand that line so much, and then, freaking, just like in the last album, Kids From Yesterday, that freaking, 
that's that's what I want that played at my graduation, you know? I mean, it, it made me realize, you know, I'm growing up and they grew up with me. And they're like, where are the kids from yesterday? And it's like, I'm an adult now. I got here. And I got here because they helped. And because of they sent the message to keep going. And, and I don't care if I look like a fool. Thank you, my chemical romance. Thank you, Gerard. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Mikey. Thank you, Matt, when you were there. And thank you, Bob, when you were there. Whether or not you guys were freaking bitter, whether you guys ended however you did, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Because without my chemical romance, there not just me, there would be tons of people that were would not even be here. And I don't know if many people believe that, and they want to say that it's not like that. They want to say that, you know, we're just a bunch of emos. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The days of being called emo might not entirely be gone, but it's barely used anymore. And you know why? Because people realized that, you know, the emo bands weren't just emo. They were talented. They're good. They wanted to rag on something because of most of the kids were teenagers and didn't know what to do. Well, we've grown up, and we're here. I don't really know what else to say other than, you know, I mean, look at that. They said, oh, you know, MCR fans are depressed. No, MCR keeps MCR fans going. And you know what? They're going to continue to keep me going regardless of if they keep playing music or not. Because every single word they've ever written, every single riff they've ever played, everything they've ever done is in my mind, it's in my heart, and it keeps me going, and it gives me the strength to keep going and reminding myself that there's good in this world, and that we can all change it, and we can all help people. And I don't, I don't think I'd be the same person without them. And I really, I just, I, I don't think I would be. Because they've influenced my life so much. Most of my life was, you know, when I didn't have anybody, I had my chemical romance. <laughs> And in the end, I feel like even if I was alone through a few years growing up being awkward, I, you know, they got me to a point where I'm happy and I can do things and I can function and they still keep me going. And when I'm down, you know, I just listen to them because they know what they're doing. They, they knew how to get us through this. They had the experience. They just had to share their experience. And through their music, it impacted a lot more lives than it would have if they didn't. And that's what they set out to do. I love you guys. I love you so much. Thank you for everything you've done, every single one of you. My chemical romance, the Black Parade, will live on forever. We will carry on. And I will keep fighting. And I will survive. Thank you for everything. I mean it from like the deepest parts of my heart. Okay. I'm doing what like every single other Obsidian fan's doing, which is crying right now. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go. Thank you, my chemical romance. And to all the fans. They love us. They did so much for us. It's time for them to do whatever they want in return.